Hello, hello, how have you all been? I hope all hexes have been safely removed as we dive into the third episode of Agatha All Along. Three episodes in and we're still in setup mode. Now, don't get me wrong, this is setup done really well in a supremely entertaining way. But let's face it, we've got another MCU TV show that will likely have no real impact on the larger MCU story. Remember all that WandaVision hype about Mephisto and the Sorcerer Supreme? Yeah, me too. The talk is very much the same again, though this time the show actually name-dropped Mephisto. It's nothing but comic nerd baiting. No queer baiting here though. Our heroines are definitely queer, even if only one of them showed up this episode. But grandiose introductions? Don't hold your breath for those. Of course, that does not really take away from how much fun the show is. It delivers a spellbinding blend of horror, humour and heart that proves this series is more than just a clever spin-off. The production design would leave even Tim Burton making The Wizard of Oz green with envy. Can someone please make that happen? Twisted trees, swirling mists and a winding path that seems to lead everywhere and nowhere at once. A perfect background for this perilous path and all done practically. The trial itself though, there may be spoilers, so proceed at own risk, was less an obstacle, more a backstory generator with plot justification. And our witches still managed to muck it up. They simply forgot to pluck Sharon's hair, did they not? If all us audience remember her, it couldn't have been so difficult for them witches, could it? On one hand, it feels like a bystander has been killed off. Would anyone care? Agatha even asks, who's Sharon? No one in the coven knows her. She is apparently not a witch. So does her death even jeopardize the mission? I know, I know. How are they gonna do the green witch trial? But then she wasn't even the green witch, was she? Isn't Agatha's ex-girlfriend the Black Heart referred to? Did the death just open up a place for her to fill? But she still was some kind of witch, right? After all, the road did appear for her. Also, her death is going to be reversed at least by turning her into a spirit, if nothing else. The Ballad of the Witches clearly says, If one be gone, we carry on, spirit as our guide. Plus, Deborah Jo Rupp's Mrs. Hart was a fan-favourite element of WandaVision, and it seems unlikely that the showrunners would dispatch her character so quickly without maximising her potential. No, episode 2 had the Salem 7, episode 3 a literal ticking clock. But none of these devices create real-time pressure. Not once does it feel like the coven can run into a difficulty they cannot overcome. Even the screw-up leading to Sharon's death feels like the result of their and Agatha's callousness, more than an honest mistake resulting from time pressure. For all their distrust of Agatha, the rest of the witches are no better really. Oh, at least the backstories unfurled beautifully, though the hallucinations are disappointingly short and end without any issues. We assume at least a few of these Chekhov's backstories will play a part in the series going forward. Lilia's ghostly girl especially excited me. It raises more questions than it answers and does so in the best way possible. And Alice's firing memory is sure to make an appearance later. After all, she is the only one other than Agatha who has a previous relationship with the road. The poison trial serves as a crucible for the coven, forcing them to confront their pasts and rely on each other despite their mistrust. Jennifer's arc is particularly compelling as she must overcome her self-doubt and tap into her latent magical knowledge to save the group. Catherine Hahn continues to shine as Agatha, delivering a nuanced performance that hints at hidden depths beneath her seemingly selfish exterior. Her encouragement of Jennifer, they can take your power but not your knowledge, is a rare moment of genuine support that adds complexity to her character. The dynamics within the coven are fascinatingly tense, 
with each witch clearly harboring their own secrets and agendas. This underlying mistrust adds a layer of suspense to every interaction, keeping viewers on edge, even in quieter moments. And then there is Disney's Sea Witch in the background. She will definitely not play an active role, if only she were to. Clearly, the horror elements are not restricted to the usual environments, but include a haunted house with white decor, bright lights, and a digital kitchen timer counting down, even if the timer hardly adds to the tension. This episodic shift to the style worked so well in WandaVision and still feels fresh when done in Agatha all along. I can't wait to see the setup for the next trial. As our witches continue their perilous journey down the witch's road, one thing is clear, nothing is certain, and the true nature of magic and its costs may be far more complex than any of them anticipated. Just like the coven having to walk into an oven, even with all the Hansel and Gretel references, I did not expect that. The blend of horror elements, character drama, and magical intrigue makes for compelling television. While the apparent loss of Sharon is shocking, it sets the stage for even more intense conflicts and revelations in the episodes to come. Agatha. All along, continues to carve out its own unique niche in the MCU, promising a wild ride for both longtime Marvel fans and newcomers alike. WandaVision was about Wanda as mother. This one is about Agatha as mother. Wanda was the real villain there. So I guess Agatha will be the real villain here? Does Mephisto have a hand in these events? Will we see the return of other WandaVision favorites? And just how deep does the rabbit hole of witchcraft go in the MCU? And seriously, why did Agatha say, who's Sharon? We can't wait to find out in the coming episodes. Until then, keep those protection spells handy and don't drink any mysterious wine while not forgetting to like, share, high five, subscribe, let our channel thrive.